Okay, so I'm up here in the Canadian Arctic on a shoot. I'm gonna let you in on a little secret. I love those what's in my bag videos. Even when I totally disagree with what the person is packing or when it's so different than what I take, I'm yelling at my computer, odds are I'll still watch to the end and start looking for more videos like it. If that's you too, you're gonna like this video because today I'm gonna go through my main shooting bag for a three month shoot in the Arctic Circle and show you what I'm bringing with me on a daily basis for professional production. And since we're in such a remote location, this is gonna be the wilderness edition of what's in my bag. So if you're the kind of filmmaker who likes to get out of the city and get your gear dirty, this one is for you. Now I'm just gonna get off this beach, find a place where I can get the bag out and show you what's inside. All right, so I got off the beach and I found a little tucked away spot uh, out of the wind where I can actually open this stuff up and show you what I'm dealing with. Just for a little bit of context here, I'm currently working as one of the lead DPs on a popular survival TV show, which I can't slash won't name for legal reasons. So if you're wondering why all my videos have been a bit rough around the edges for the last month or so, now you know. And if you have been watching and you've been asking yourself, doesn't this guy ever change his clothes? The answer is not as much as you might think. That's disgusting. I'm deep in the Arctic Circle here, and this is actually the furthest north I've ever worked. And the tree line ends not all that far from here, and then it's just tundra all the way to the North Pole. So on a personal level, this has been a really cool shooting location, but it's also the perfect opportunity to show you what I'm carrying on a daily basis as a remote environment doc cinematographer. When it comes to working in places like this, you really have to learn how to make compromises because as much as you might like to bring a full set of, I don't know, cinema primes and a massive stack of filters, you also need to be able to carry this stuff on your back. On a normal day here, I'm getting in and out of boats multiple times a day, I'm loading my gear into helicopters and hiking long distances without a big team of assistants to carry my gear for me. This isn't anything like a set where an AC is gonna run in and take the camera off my shoulder the second the director yells cut. I'm hauling this stuff all day, every day. And so you have to learn not to be too precious and focus on functionality over everything else. Okay, so let's just dive right into it and I'll show you what I'm working with. First up, obviously here is the bag. And if you've been following this channel for any length of time, you'll probably know that I mainly work with F-stop bags. They're built more like hiking packs than camera bags. They're really well designed. They're insanely tough. And I happen to think that they look good too. The pack you work with as a filmmaker always matters, but in a place like this, it matters even more. In my opinion, you're gonna want a pack that has a higher weather resistance. Like it can get wet wet and dirty while keeping your gear safe. And it has to be well balanced enough that you can carry heavy loads for long periods without wanting to die. That means thick straps and a really good uh, waist belt to take the weight off your back and shoulders. F-Stop happens to be great at all these things and that's why I use their bags pretty much exclusively these days. This is not a sponsor video, by the way. There are other brands that people seem to really like out there that fit into this same niche as well though. Uh, but just whatever you do, don't come out to a place like this with one of those space age looking urban sling bags or something because it's gonna ruin your life. Okay, so let's just start going through the pockets one at a time and then we'll dive into the pack itself. So this very front pocket here, I carry a Porta Brace rain cover in an environment like this, the rain and the moisture is your biggest enemy. So carrying one of these things that fits the camera perfectly, which in this case is a super old FS7. This uh, isn't my camera. I'm working with mostly the production company stuff on this, but this one is designed exactly to fit uh, on top of this camera. So it's still a giant pain to use, I'll be honest, but it does keep the camera pretty dry and it's about as good as it gets when it comes to all weather uh, protection for a cinema camera. Uh, next up, what else is in here? This is just a down jacket, a small packable one in case it gets super cold and you get caught out. Uh, you always wanna be able to keep yourself warm. If you start going hypothermic even, you're not much good to the production. So always keep an extra layer. This one's really warm and we're in the Arctic after all. On this outside pocket here, I have first and foremost a radio. Super important to stay safe uh, in remote environments. There's grizzly bears, there's wolves, there's all sorts of stuff out here. So this is how I stay in touch with the safety team. And even when I'm out shooting YouTube videos like this and I'm away from the main camp, I can always be in communication with the people that can come and save me if something goes wrong. Also in here, some gloves. I have pretty bad circulation, but um, in general, shooting in the outdoors, you wanna keep your hands working because as soon as you start to lose dexterity, everything gets difficult and there's nothing worse than just shooting a standing interview, for example, and it's really cold out and your hands are just going numb and you can feel the blood rushing out and it's just so painful, but you can't move, it's torturous. So good gloves are great. On this side, it's in here. Water bottle, nothing fancy, drink tons of water. 
And in this top pocket, a headlamp, really useful outdoors, an anchor battery, I can charge cameras off of this. And I also have some extremely industrial mosquito and bug repellent. Uh, this stuff is like 100% DEET, you never wanna put this on your body. But when the bugs get really bad, I'll spray it on my hat and that keeps bugs out of my face when I'm shooting, so. Nice to have, just don't get it on your skin because I'm pretty sure this stuff is what napalm is made out of. Okay, what else? I love packs that open from the back or, or this part here, whatever, whatever you want to call that. Just means that you can put the weather resistant side facing down, put the bag down on the tough side in the mud or the dirt or whatever, and then it opens from here. Definitely lots of other bags do this, but F-Stop just does it really well, so I like them. Also on the outside, I have this little headphone pouch. Headphones are so important to have, especially in environments like this, because if you realize too late that the audio is messed up, your whole story is in big trouble. So always carry headphones, always check, don't rely on the levels, always be monitoring. So I tend to forget them all the time. So by having them attached to the bag like this, I always have them when I need them. Moving to the inside of the bag, we have a tool pouch, really handy outdoors. There's a rocket blower. There's a Leatherman in here, really, really handy. Everyone should have one. Uh, Allen keys, there is lens tissue, some screwdriver attachments for the multi-tool, some bongo ties. Oh, also down in here, I have a broken off paintbrush. This is really good. The blower can get fine dust and stuff off, but when there's dirt that really works its way into the cracks of your gear, this is handy for getting it out at the end of the day. Okay, let's move on to the lenses. I am notorious for bringing tons and tons of stuff. Many camera assistants who've worked with me in the past can attest to the fact that I will haul in massive backpacks worth of stuff, um, sometimes to the point of overkill. But in a place like this, where you are gonna have to make some sacrifices over what you bring, you have to prioritize flexibility and versatility over the absolute best in image quality, at least for this specific show. Some other shoots are different, you know, but uh, as much as I would like to be working with my you know, Fuji cine zooms and a full set of primes, we just can't carry that kind of glass. By the way, I'm not even allowed to use my own camera, so it's whatever the production company will give me, which is an FS7 Mark I, super old camera, which you can actually buy for like 1200 bucks on eBay right now, I just checked. And they're shooting one of the most popular shows in the world, I'm not gonna tell you what show it is, extremely popular show on all the big distributors and they're shooting them on FS7 Mark ones that you can get for 1200 bucks. So don't be afraid to buy used cameras. We're also using a Metabones to adapt Canon glass. So nothing fancy here. This is a 24 105. If, if this was my own shoot, I'd use my 18 to 55 to cover um, all purpose Verite scenes. Shape handle on the side, uh, Sennheiser shotgun mic. Uh, but none of this is my gear. The only thing on this rig that's mine is this rock climbing harness that I use as a strap. So that's the camera. <clears throat> so that means I'm using E-mount lenses or adapted Canon lenses. Uh, so the 24-105 is my all-purpose lens. And then I also have this monster. This is my lens. This is a Sigma 60 to 600. This is a beast. It's super heavy, but it covers any reasonable amount of zoom uh, and then some because this is a super 35 camera with the crop sensor this is actually even more of a zoom than that so any normal coverage it's a 24 to 105 but if i need to do anything from a sort of landscape to wildlife shots from super far away this lens will cover me for all of it it's not you know the best optical lens ever uh the focus is not perfect you know this is not a high-end cinema lens but it is extremely handy in a place like this. It takes the job of, you know, three other lenses that I don't need to bring now. So when working in a spot like this, you just have to make those kind of choices. Uh, and then also on top of that, I am carrying a 100 millimeter macro lens. Um, on this show in particular, you know, we really wanna personalize or visualize the landscape. So one of the ways you can get a really different perspective on natural environments is to get super close and macro lenses are amazing at that. So that's it. Those are the three lenses I'm carrying and they cover me for everything I need. Again, not the crazy best, but out here it is a pretty powerful combo and I can cover anything. Uh, also in here, 
filters. The FS7 does have built-in filters, but because the native ISO is 2000 and it's not dual native ISO in the middle of the day, sometimes you don't have enough ND. So I also carry additional ND, which I also use for the FX3. Um, right now I'm using Nisi uh, True Color. Yeah, Nisi True Color filters. They're super cool. They screw on. They It's really easy to add more ND on top of this. This is a, a two to five stop that covers me for most situations, but I can also put on a five to nine stop on top of it as well, just with magnets. I use this one mostly because I don't see any color shifting in it. Uh, but the real reason is just this simple little knob at the bottom when you're in a wilderness environment uh, and I'm wearing gloves all the time. And in a month from now, I'm not even gonna be able to leave the building we're staying in without wearing crazy huge mittens. It's gonna be so cold. So just this simple little knob on the end of the filter completely changes the game makes them so much more versatile and so much more pleasant to use. I don't know why more, more companies don't do this, but Nisi, great job on that. Can recommend them just because of that. Probably costs like 10 cents to put that on there. Uh, extra battery. It's the FS7, we're not mounting it with V-mount, so it's just the standard Sony BPUs. They run for like three hours on these cameras. They're incredible. Um, in here, we move into audio, so I've got Set of labs, super important to have audio on your characters. A Sankin COS 11D, if you've never heard of these things, this is the one biggest quality of life, or I should say quality of sound improvements you can make to your mics. Rather than go out and buy new mics, just replace the stock mic or the stock you know, lav cable that comes with whatever you own with one of these and you're gonna notice an immediate difference in your sound quality. So, you know, if you own sort of more budget oriented microphones already or, or lav packs, don't replace them for something more expensive. Try getting this first, it's amazing. Uh, they're really small, they're really easy to hide and I try not to mic anybody without using one of these. Also a little bit more audio stuff here. Um, I have a tentacle timecode box. This is a multicam shoot, so sometimes we want to run timecode. I have some medical tape for attaching the lav mics to people. I've got a tentacle track E, which is an internally recording uh, lav mic as well. So this camera only has two XLR ports, which means shotgun and lav take up all the audio ports. So if I ever get into a situation where a second person needs a mic or even a third or fourth, throw one of these on them and it can record everything internally and they can sync it later in post. Also got an extra Sankin mic in here for the tentacle and a pack of Rycoat overcovers. These things are great. They're basically little wind jammers, tiny little adorable wind jammers, and you use double-sided sticky pads. Um, you sandwich the mic cable between them, stick them under a person's clothing, and then you have a sort of windproof microphone attachment point. Really handy. If you've never used these things, uh, they make miking people much, much faster. And that's pretty much all I have in here. The last thing in the bag is right at the top and that's a drone. I know sometimes on this channel I'm harsh on drones because I think they're overused a lot but they are incredibly handy storytelling tools and especially when you're out here where at ground level it just looks like I'm in a scrubby piece of tundra but when you get up high you can see that there's actually you know hundreds and hundreds of lakes around me and it's pretty amazing looking so Really handy to get a different perspective in an outdoor environment. I am using the DJI Air 2S. Couple reasons why I still have this one. One, it's still working, so I don't see the need to replace it. It still looks pretty good to me. Um, two, it's tiny, so it just fits in the top of the backpack and I never have to worry about carrying it or I never question carrying it. It just goes in the bag and I can bring it with four batteries and it doesn't add that much extra weight. And then lastly, the reason I still like this drone is because now it's three years old, maybe more, I've been using it and I've gotten a ton of value out of it and I'm not that scared of crashing it anymore, which means I take more chances with it and I'm less stressed when it's up in bad weather or something like that. I am kind of tempted by the Mavic uh, 3 Pro. It looks really great actually. The other DP on this show has one and I'm jealous every time I see him using it and just the incredible images that it's producing. So I might upgrade to that, but right now this one's great and I would probably still keep it as a sort of risk taking drone. So yeah, don't write off older stuff. Don't always upgrade to the newest and best because this is a huge show and I'm still using a pretty old drone for it.
so there we go. That's pretty much the bag. It's everything that I'm packing on a daily basis for working in the Arctic Circle. So obviously this stuff changes all the time and that's why I always say as a DP or a filmmaker, it's great to familiarize yourself with a lot of different gear because on some of these big shoots, you're not gonna be able to use your own stuff. You just gotta be able to pick up and use whatever they give you. So even if it's not maybe what I would have chosen, uh, I'm still going with it and that's your job as a filmmaker or a cinematographer. I also, you know, might not bring such an extreme telephoto lens if I wasn't shooting so many animals or I wasn't looking for wildlife. So it's job to job, I'll switch this out. I even have a much bigger version of this, the Shin 80 liter pack, I think it is, that I'll bring if I need to haul around some serious gear, but that tends to get so heavy that it's not practical for carrying all day. But in general, that's a pretty good idea of what I'm carrying with me for a normal shoot day up here in the far north of Canada. Hope you like that one as much as I like watching other people's bag videos. And now I'm gonna head in because the sun is down and I'm getting pretty chilly. See ya.